Welcome, Shuko and Tin Toy fans. Well, it's been a while since the Tin Maestro's come to you with a new episode. I had a lot to do this summer. We had a bunch of Porsche 356 stuff, and then I got COVID. So that's what's taken me so long to get back to you, but I have a special presentation for you today. This is the Shuko spring replacement that a lot of you have asked about. So the other day, I got a mystery package from one of our fans. And let's take a look what's in there. Look, there's a broken spring in two pieces don't ever throw away that old spring you're going to need it <laughs> down the line for uh, measuring and so on and then what's in this little box ah a new spring and by the way it's packaged I can tell this came from Peter Reichard at Schuko Clinic in Germany he supplies the best springs actually the best parts and then a box of peanut brittle which is fantastic I've been looking forward to some Nice peanut brittle for a long time. It's getting near Thanksgiving. So let's see what we got here. What kind of... Oh. It's not peanut brittle. It's an Examico. And this Examico was sent to us by a fellow named Bernie. And Bernie's done a great job in refurbishing this uh, Examico. Great work, Bernie. And I, as I understand it, he followed the techniques that we've outlined with the uh, Tinmeister. So thanks a lot, Bernie. You've done a great job. So you can see he's taking it all apart. Uh, it's all ready for me to put the spring back in. So here's the motor. And we're always going to be looking at this motor from this view, from this side. Keep that in mind. And here are a couple things you need to know. That little piece right there is what I call the catch. And this is the spindle. And we're going to go over this in a little more detail later. And here's another view of the catch. Very important parts when we put our new spring in. So let's take a look at some diagrams that I've drawn up for you. First is the parts. There's a large gear. There's the catch we just talked about. There's the spindle we talked about. And then there's an opening in the back for the end of the spring, which we call the anchor end. The second diagram shows where the spring will be attached. So the red part is obviously a spring. And you're going to bend the top of the spring and you're going to let it hang down. And we'll go over this in more detail. The next step is that you're going to take the anchor end and you're going to put it up to the back of uh, the uh, motor casing where there's an opening and that's going to tie in the spring, the anchor end. And finally, you're going to wind it ever so carefully to make sure it all stays in place. And when you're done winding it, you're actually done. Okay, so what's it look like in real life? So here's the motor, and Bernie's done the hard part. He's taken the old spring out, and by far the hardest part. So uh, that's the view we're going to be looking at, always from this side, where the, the uh, key fits on the spindle. And you can see from my toothpick here, we're going to point out some parts. So there's the large gear we looked at in the diagrams. There is the catch. There's a spindle, and on the back, there's the opening for the anchor end. Remember, we always look at it from this angle, from this side, from the left side of the Xanaco. The other Shuko toys have very similar mechanisms, and you can follow these same steps for those, for those toys. So let's measure the old spring to make sure it's correct. So we always want to measure the width. And here we have seven millimeters. Different Shuko toys have different springs. They have different lengths and different widths. And the new spring is seven millimeters. And Peter Reichardt has done a great job in supplying the correct spring for us. There we go. For instance, the pre-war Examico uses seven millimeter, where a post-war is eight millimeter. So we take off the wrapping that Peter did in Germany. Make sure we don't kink or scratch uh, the uh, spring.
because when we unwrap the spring, it's straight. It's not all curled up like you'd imagine a spring to be. It's straight, but when we put it in the car and we start winding it, it will turn into that uh, curly Q spring that we all know. So there's the catch end. And on the far end is the anchor end. And that's what the spring looks like once we've wound it up. And there we go. So let's get at it. So this is uh, this is the old spring. This is what attached to the catch and the spindle inside uh, the motor. You can see it's bent over, and we are going to bend our spring to be the same way. It'll look a little different, but you'll see. Okay, here we go. So let's go to the anchor end of the spring and bend it tightly. Not too tightly, but tightly, you'll see. So it's about 180 degrees the other way. And there we go. And that's all you need to do to get the spring ready. Don't bend this end. That's the anchor end. Do not bend that. Okay, now we're getting ready to actually install it, the spring into the motor, and we want to turn the spindle around so the catch end is in the correct position for our sliding the spring in. There's the catch. Notice it's kind of vertical. Look on the diagram here in a moment and you'll see. See how the, the, the catch is vertical, so we're going to slide the spring in between that catch and the spindle. Here we go. So you take the anchor in first, and you slide it in that slot right there by the catch. It'll slide right through. It's on the catch and it's between the catch and the spindle. Okay, the next step is putting the anchor end into the opening in the back. You want to slide it in, turn it, and make sure it's well seated in there. Not quite there yet. Watch my finger push it down. There you go. Now we're in a good, good shape. So the anchor is in there. Everything's ready. And now we begin to carefully wind the spring, making sure that the catch end is uh, solid against the, uh, the catch and the spindle. And we start to slowly wind it.
Are these your hiking shoes? 